Hey there, my name is Anthony Romano and in this video I'm going to tell you how to build muscle and burn fat at the same time. This is a unique approach that I use myself to great results, but it's not something you're going to find anywhere else on YouTube. Most of the other videos on this topic on YouTube are just going to tell you to eat lots of protein, sleep lots, drink water, and train hard. That's, that's not what I'm putting out here. This is my own approach and I use it to great effect. So it is complicated, but bear with me. You, you'll you probably learn a lot by the end of, of this video. Going to be a pretty complicated video so i'm going to list the main keys right now to allow you to burn as much fat as possible and add as much muscle at the same time so the main keys themselves are number one a fat adapted metabolism so that can only be achieved after doing a keto diet for longer than a month or so this is going to allow you to be burning fat at all times in the day so you're going to be maximizing fat lost and it's going to allow your body to have enough energy even if you're not eating at times to train hard, which will then allow you to gain muscle. So training is the next key for gaining. Oh, damn, that was a good rhyme. Uh, <laughs> training is the requirement for gaining muscle. Muscle is a byproduct of strength, and in order to build muscle, you have to increase your lifts. So the way you do this is by getting fat adapted, which will give you enough energy to hit the lifts that increase every week, and you're gonna follow up those heavy lifts with lots of volume training and high repetitions during your workouts. So this is going to also stimulate mTOR, which is a big controller of muscle growth in your body, and your eating on this diet is also going to stimulate mTOR. So mTOR is key, and the only ways you can do it are by insulin and leucine. So basically, on this diet, you're going to maximize how you get both of those in this diet and chunk that into one part of the day. So another thing here is positive nitrogen balance and a calorie deficit. So on any fat loss diet, you need a calorie deficit. This is important because it's a primary driver of fat loss. However, the positive nitrogen balance is the only key for building muscle. This basically means adequate protein, but I'm gonna explain that more in this video. So if you have a positive nitrogen balance and you're stimulating mTOR and you're training hard and you're in a fat metabolism, those are all gonna piece together to allow you to build muscle most effectively in one part of the day and burn fat for the majority of the day. Additionally, intermittent fasting is going to amplify both of those effects because it allows your body to have various benefits like increased insulin sensitivity, which will not only increase the amount of muscle you can gain and stimulate that mTOR pathway, but it's also going to maximize the amount of fat burned throughout the majority of the day. So that is the rundown. I'm going to explain this all right now. Now, in order to build muscle, the only requirement technically is a positive nitrogen balance. So that basically means eating adequate protein. Awesome, I love protein. Nitrogen balance is basically how much protein, well how much nitrogen your body is taking in compared to how much it's using. So adequate protein is key, but also adequate sources of amino acids. So a diverse amount of amino acids is key here. Somebody give this man some protein! I'll get into that in a moment. So you need positive nitrogen balance, you need adequate stimulation of mTOR. So mTOR is a pathway in your body that is responsible for a lot of growth. All types of growth, whether it's good or bad, cancerous, muscle growth, doesn't matter. mTOR is in charge of a lot of that. And you need to stimulate that, and the only way you can do that is through, basically for bodybuilding purposes, insulin and leucine so insulin is a, a response insulin is often released as a response to carbohydrates and sugar because it lowers your blood sugar and distributes the nutrients into your muscles now that's what you might know if you follow typical bodybuilder diets but when you are on a fat loss diet it is hard to stimulate insulin enough while also keeping it low enough to allow for fat loss and preventing fat from being stored so the way you're going to need to do this is you're going to need to have a fat adapted ketogenic diet in place. This is the biggest key of the whole video. You need to be on a ketogenic diet and the only way to get fat adapted is by doing a keto diet for at least a month or so. 
everybody's different, but a month is generally where people start to get fat adapted. This is where your body is able to start using energy to increase your lifts and start using energy throughout the entire day that is coming from fat. So on a typical carb-based cut, you're only going to have enough energy as you're feeding your body. Your body's going to be primarily using carbs and it's not going to be as effective at burning fat for fuel because it mostly does it with carbs. Now for fuel, on a fat adapted diet, your body is mostly using fats, either ones that you're intaking or ones that your body is using from its own stores. And it's not only going to be better at burning fat, but it's going to be better at burning fat even when you don't have food. So in general, even if you're in a calorie deficit on a cut and you're trying to increase your strength, if you are fat adapted, your body is going to be way better at pulling from its own fat stores and using that energy to make up for your calorie deficits. You'll never catch me, crabs. Not when I shift into maximum overdrive. Hi-ya! So even if you're eating in a pretty large deficit, if you're, you'll have enough energy to train hard enough due to the constant access to fat as energy and from the limited amount of carbs that your body will be able to produce through extra protein and, and greens when you're fat adapted. Bottom line, fat adaption is key. It's going to allow you to have enough energy to perform and get that training adequate training stimulus while you're on this cut, and it's going to allow you to burn fat more effectively. So you're getting the best of both worlds just by this one key. I, uh, that's one of my main videos on my page, actually, is because that is the one key to allowing this to happen. Now, when it comes to burning fat, if you can incorporate fasting into this program, that is going to be huge. Fasting is going to be huge for burning fat and for adding muscle because it's going to increase your insulin sensitivity, which is going to allow for better stimulation of mTOR because more of the insulin you're intaking is going to be uh, actually getting used and it's not going to be resistant to any amounts of insulin because you're going to be increasing your insulin sensitivity through a fat adapted diet. Any diet is going to increase your insulin sensitivity, but the amount that you're able to increase your insulin sensitivity by using keto is way higher. So this is going to be better for flushing nutrients into your muscles for activating mTOR along with leucine consumption. And it's going to help with your positive nitrogen balance not leading to fat storage because too much protein can be a problem. Now, so here's the overall look. You have a ketogenic diet that's fat adapted in place. You have a fasting protocol that allows you to basically run off of fat for most of the day. This is going to allow you to train at good levels, very intense levels, where you're going to be focusing on your strength and adding lots of volume training. From there, your nutrient intake needs to look something like this. You need to be taking in complete sources of protein with most of the amino acids, the essential amino acids being hit. And when it comes to good sources, eggs are a great source and they're very high in leucine. So leucine again is important for mTOR and it is an insulinogenic amino acid, which will mean that it gets flushed into your muscles right away. So basically, when you are fasting, in addition to being fat adapted, you're maximizing your body's ability to use insulin and loose in proteins for muscle building. And you're also making your body burn predominantly fat during that chunk of the day where you are fasting. So if you're fat adapted, you're gonna get more out of fasting. And if you're fasting while fat adapted, you're gonna get more out of the muscle building parts of the day. Think of it in evolution. If, if humans were only eating, hunting, and spending most of the day fasting, which a lot of people theorize was the case for a lot of indigenous civilizations, when it comes to how they would, you know, go about their day and, and not and survive and, and thrive, if they were eating mostly at the end of the day after they hunted, their body would need to be in a fat burning state throughout the majority of the day. And then during that period of time where they're consuming large amounts of animal fats and animal proteins, their body would need to be have an optimal amount which from which it could restore the body and improve the body and grow. So it makes sense in an evolutionary context, this approach. But here's the deal. We have supplementation and, and added science nowadays, okay, better science. And the thing is, when you have leucine consumption, so if you supplement with BCAs, for example, and you do that during after a fasted period, so not during the fasted period, because you want to maximize the fat burning during that time, if you have it with your first meal, BCAs, that's going to be a great supplement to 
not only stimulate mTOR, because there are studies that have shown that leucine in and of itself will stimulate mTOR, and also will slightly increase your insulin, but insulin will get raised during any meal that you eat, even on a ketogenic diet. So if you have an adequate amount of leucine, so an adequate variety of amino acids, predominantly leucine, you're getting your protein, it doesn't have to be too high, but you're getting it around 30% of your daily intake, around 0.8 grams per pound of body weight to a pound and a half or amounts of grams per day per body weight. If you're getting somewhere in that range, your body is going to be much better at actually building protein. And that's going to, you're going to want your day to be chunked up into two phases, a fat burning phase and a building phase. So this is going to be fasting for the majority of the day. If you can push it to 20 hours, that's great. And have your a four hour eating window. Even if you do an eight hour eating window, this is going to be effective. But the thing is, <laughs> the thing is when you have the, your day chunked up into these two compartments, you're basically maximizing fat burn during one and maximizing muscle growth and repair during the other. So in the end result, if you are stimulating mTOR through insulin and leucine, getting a positive nitrogen balance by having adequate amounts of protein and getting them from whole sources of protein, you're training adequately, you're in a calorie deficit, you're fasting, and you're fat adapted most of all. Basically, that is the whole recipe to burning fat and building muscle at the same time. The fasting is also key because it's gonna increase your growth hormone and your IGF-1, which is kind of like a transporter of growth hormone. And basically, when you have that going on, that's gonna maximize the results that your body creates when you're in that feeding period and that building period of the day. It's a very slow and subtle process. However, that's how I treat my, my fat loss diets because I like to keep my training intense I like to keep my strength the same and if not increase it, which I do during my cuts. But at the same time, it's just good for your health overall if you're doing a fat adapted keto diet because not only is it gonna help with your, your blood sugar and a lot of other sugar related problems in the body, but you are typically able to get more dense nutrient intake on a fat adapted keto diet due to the foods you're eating, the fat soluble vitamin content, and overall, the fact that you're mostly eating clean animal products that are high in fat and protein and decent distribution of vegetables here and there, and you're getting adequate amounts of protein. So your body's going to have enough energy covered and you don't necessarily need to eat, you know, nutrient deficient things like example oats, which are predominantly just a food for energy. They're not necessarily a food for health and nutrient density. So this is also key because the fat soluble vitamins are play more of a hormonal role in your body and you're only able to get them from fatty foods. So if you're also on a carb-based cut, your body's not going to necessarily be able to get most of those fatty vitam vitamins that require fat, so fat-soluble vitamins, from a diet that's low in fat. And when it, overall, what this actually looks like is you're probably going to be having a big salad in the day, a good amount of eggs, so anywhere from 5 to 10 eggs a day, decent meat you know meal whether it's steak turkey beef chicken whatever fish those are all great as well as long as your calorie distribution is somewhere around 30 percent protein to a little higher and the rest of your intake of food is coming from fats you should get very good results in this program keep your strength in check try to increase it every week and you could end up with something like my approach which ends up you know my results personally are adding a couple reps to my bench, adding over 30 to 40 pounds to my weighted dips and weighted pull-ups, and overall kept my, it slightly increased some isolation movements like biceps, bicep curls. But for the large part of this, it's a very subtle process, but it's going to allow you to retain muscle at a way better rate than any other diet for fat loss, and from my experience, add strength and some noticeable amounts of muscle. So this is a very undertouched area of science. There's very, very few studies on fat adapted keto diets. Most of them are on regular keto diets and that's why they'll say there is a performance dip when you do keto, but that's only for the first month. After that point, your body gets better at using fats and carbs for energy 
and it's only going to use fats for daily activities and anything aerobic and anything that you need high intensity for is going to come partly from aerobic energy source so fat and also from stored carbohydrates which your body's going to get from proteins and vegetables so that is the approach and that is how i personally cut and i like doing that every time i cut because it allows me to get the best results visually and performance wise so if you gained anything from that video i'd love to hear your responses but besides that thanks for watching my name is anthony romano peace Oh, 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 oh,